uh, welcome to the Gold Coast Turf Club. We're in the mounting yard with one of Queensland's best jockeys, Mick Carl. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mick. That's a pleasure, Blair. Um, mate, we know you banged the foot and, and have been out for a while. You've been back now, I think it was a few months off, riding in really good form. You're happy with how everything's going? Yeah, I've been fortunate, Blair. I've came back, uh, it took me a couple of weeks to ride a winner, but I've had a um, pretty good stream of them up until now so it's been okay it took me a little while to get my fitness and weight and timing all back together but it's on it's on the right track i'm still probably not right at my top but i'm, I'm getting there i'm pretty close to it and weight is obviously most jockeys can battle from time to time you're good most of the time have you ever had big struggles oh i do yeah i do i wouldn't say they're big struggles but i, I do have to uh diet and reduce and all that business. I normally ride at 54 with the rest, all the restrictions in place and the, the, the spas and the jockey's rooms out of order at the moment. It makes it a little bit harder to, to get down to that minimum and the Racing Queensland have raised the weights to, to 55 the minimum which has made it easier for myself and my colleagues but I still have to watch it pretty closely to ride at that weight. Yeah and we were talking off air there we had um, you've had a lot of luck on the Gold Coast track um, we're talking the Magic Millions Real Surreal uh, winner and a couple of others. Um, it's been a good track to you over the years? Oh, it, it has, Blair. I've had, a, you know, it's, it's, I regard this as my home track. Well, it has been for 25 years now. And it's a, um, it has been good to me. I won the Magic Millions here in 2013. That was probably the, the highlight. But I've won a lot of other feature races here, including the Hollandale Stakes. On Lee Baz, I've won two Prime Minister's Cups, three Bat Out of Hells, and yeah, a lot of other feature races. Ken Russell and and other ones as well. It's been very fortunate. I've been very fortunate to, um, to enjoy the success I have here. Um, we've got, that's one of the, obviously your favourites around here. You're saying we've, you've ridden overseas. Have you, you have a favourite stint between the tracks that you rode overseas? Uh, I've ridden in most of Asia. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd probably have to say Hong Kong. I spent 18 months in Hong Kong and it's, uh, everyone knows how highly regarded the racing is there. I enjoyed my time there. It is a pretty tough school, but uh, Singapore, Macau, Malaysia, I've been in South Korea, and my last overseas stint was in uh, Mauritius. But no, I enjoyed my time overseas riding there. I think it, any jockey that goes and rides in those places, it, it's got to help their riding, and it's good seeing the different riding styles and also the different cultures in those places. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, and obviously you would have raced, ridden against some of the, the world's best. Is there a couple off the top of your head that you've ridden um, over the years or, or any in recent times, uh, locals that you, you think you, you regard very highly? Oh, it's a good question, Blair, because I've ridden against probably all the top jockeys from the last 20 years, really, at one time or another. And I always held Mick Kanaan in, in high regard. I rode against him in Hong Kong and, and Singapore and the likes of Frankie Vittori, Christophe Sumion. So many of those great jockeys. Joe Marrera now in recent times is probably one of the, 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 the bright names. Zach Purton who started his trade off here. Uh, locally I've always um, always found Mick Pelling was a, was a very tough competitor and he learned a lot of him. Gary Palmer, when I first came to Queensland, they were the top jockeys here, Brian York, but I've, I've ridden against them all. Mick Dittman, Larry Olsen, so many, um, so many good names and it's hard to, uh, it's hard to, to differentiated against those top riders. Uh, and obviously ridden plenty of good horses in recent times, obviously. Uh, the Bostonian has been very good to you. It's, what makes him so good? <laughs> oh, he's just a good horse. I think, I think his temperament, Blair, is probably his, his main attribute. He's just got such a calm temperament. A bomb could go off beside him and he wouldn't even prick his ears. I first rode him, my first ride on him was in the Daybreak Lover at, uh, in 2018. I think he's a three-year-old and he won and then he went to Brisbane won again, then I won the Sunshine Coast Guineas on him. I went over to New Zealand and rode him in a Group 1 in April of 2019, and Melody Bell beat him, he ran well. And then I joined forces with him again here in the winter last year, and we had a pretty successful association. He won the Doom in 10,000 and the Kingsford Smith, and he got beaten the straight break, but in, as, as that, um, can happen in racing, things didn't go his way that, that day. But no, he's a very good horse. He's came back and subsequently won another Group 1 in Sydney. He's a, he's a real top liner. Yeah, as a punter, the, the amazing thing with 
with him, I think is the fact he just keeps going around at big odds. <laughs> he just keeps winning and keeps going around at the double figure odds in a lot of them. You're right. He's a, I don't know how to explain that. He's, a, he's probably a horse that's um, had a little bit of a low profile, even though he's raced in top company all his career. And he's won, what, three group ones, yeah. I think, a group three and a number of listed races. I, I think he's probably only ever won one race that wasn't black type. So it is a bit surprising that he is always sort of coming out at generous odds, but how it is. Um, massive book of rides. Um, you've got plenty of winning chances. I will say multiple winners to come for sure tomorrow. Um, just a couple that you were on last start that we can that we can look at. The chosen one was a really good debut. Caught the eye, had the flashing light. Uh, looks very hard to beat tomorrow. He does, Blair. He's a nice horse. He, uh, he's inexperienced beating at his debut. He was a bit slow out and got lacked a little bit of race experience back at the tail of a big field. Hopefully he's learned a bit from that and can begin a bit better tomorrow, although he is awkwardly drawn, so I'm just not sure where he'll be in running, but he's he's definitely, uh, he's trained by a, a top trainer in Neville McBurney, who's had some good horses over the years, and I know he's got a pretty high opinion of his horse. Let the members know that we're tipping him, so, and we know that you're getting cover from 10, not a drama there. Um, and the other one was just JJ DR, like I tipped it for the, the followers last time, looked a little flat, was there any did any issue with the horse, did you feel, or did you just think might improve from that run? Look, I've got to be honest, Blair, I thought she may have gone a bit better than she did, I thought she was probably my best ride yeah. uh, last meeting, as I'd trialled her uh, probably 10 or 12 days before that, and she trialled really well, and she was probably a little bit flat, as you say, she had a good run in transit, she just didn't, she just couldn't sort of make much ground in the straight, I'm hoping, hoping she uh, take something out of that run and she can recapture her best form tomorrow. If she does, she'll be hard to beat. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better because I thought she was the best of the day as well. Um, look, thanks for joining us. Um, we appreciate it and, and we're blessed to have you racing in our section, in our region, um, in, in these strange times. Um, good luck tomorrow and hopefully plenty of winners to come. Thanks so much.